homies, my closest friends, for the whole school system. So they was like, y'all can't never be in the same classes, y'all can't never associate, blah, blah, blah. I'm in third grade, right? So as far as I was concerned, I dropped out of that whole shit at third grade. And I was just going because my mom wanted me to go. Um, but hip hop, my older brother introduced me to hip hop. And I started uh, just appreciating the skill and the culture and, and, and all, everything it meant. Um, and so my brother said, you know, I'm going to be a DJ. I'm going to play the records. Mm -hmm. And you're going to be the MC. And I was like, what is that? You know? <laughs> But he was cool as hell, eight years older than me, so whatever he put me on, I'm on. So I started studying hip hop. I started studying the lyrics, the cadence, the flow, the breathing, you know, the content, you know, how they was able to do these things, freestyling, all of that. And I, I became a, a student uh, consistently. And, and I got a little confidence in it, and I started performing in different places, and I got a name for being somebody who, who could hold a mic, you know? And um, so that was my thing, but at that time, it was just battle rap. It was all about, um, I'm nice, and you not, you know? And, and I was just doing that, doing that, doing that. So fast forward, I'm a person who, in the ninth grade, this is, this is the, what brothers was talking about, the, the poverty of the, the teaching, right? In the ninth grade, I had never heard of Malcolm X. Mm -hmm. I had never heard of our struggle in a, in a way that was uh, empowering. You know what I mean? I had felt our struggle and been living it, but I never connected it to empowerment, right? So uh, I have unplugged, you know, and uh, there was, there was this, this lady, Miss Green, who, you know, was a tall black lady, she had a little fro, and uh, she came over to me in the hallway one day, and she, and she said, I always see you rap, you know, with, with that vibe. Like, I always see you rap. You know, she was like, well, what, what do you be talking about? You know, what, what, are, what are you talking about in them raps, you know? And I was just looking like, you know I rap, you know? And, um, Long story short, she gave me a challenge. At our, our high school, Wakala High School, if you, you probably never heard of that, uh, but it's outside of Tallahassee, about 30 miles south of Tallahassee, Florida, where I grew up. It's a racist town, racist culture, racist redneck curriculum, all that shit. And that was our reality. And so this, this black woman gave me a challenge. She said, we're going to have the first ever uh, black history assembly, and I know that you be rapping, so I'm gonna give you an opportunity to rap about something that means something, right? And she challenged me to, she gave me these three books, I, it was like Ebony something, but uh, it was basically like uh, history consolidated in different ways, right? And she was like, boom, soak that up, I'm, I'm using my language. She was like, soak that up, and um, if you write, of a verse um, about black history, I'll let you perform at your assembly. So, and then she, and then I was just like, that's gonna be corny, right? <laughs> you know? So, so she said, and if you do that, I'll let you do one of your other rounds. I was like, okay, bet. <laughs> right? So, that's what I did. So, this, but this was changed my life, right? I wouldn't be here today if that didn't happen. Uh, long story short, I, you know, I did some research and I, I just started just opening my mind on, on so many things and connecting. I discovered Malcolm X, blah, blah, blah. I ended up writing this verse that I said on stage, a stage like this. In the middle of the verse, the racist uh, principal, Mr. Nobles, came on stage and cut the, cut the music off while I'm, while I'm spitting. And he... Uh, he was just, we're not going to have that. He, it was just crazy. He just started talking over me and just like, we're not having that. You know what I mean? Period, right? So all the students, I'm looking down just like this, and people in the, in the audience was like, why can't you say it, say it if it's the truth? So it was, it was a moment, you know what I mean, where, you know, the, the youth was like, nah, we're not going to let you stop this. So next thing we know, 
Melee popped off, glasses got broke, a couple, couple people got roughed up a little bit, and I ended up walking outside after, after a minute, and the news cameras was at school. My mom, the churches, the Nation of Islam, all, the whole community had showed up, and we ended up having this battle in school about uh, control over, student control over that assembly and what that meant for us to, you know, be able to speak our truth and, and coordinate it and let it be what it needed to be. So that's how um, hip hop and its relevance to my community in general, you know, came together to me. You know what I mean? So, you know, fast forward, I, I recognize that, you know, Miss Green was a catalyst. Like many of you are in a position to be catalysts for people. And they ain't have nothing to do with the classroom, really. You know, you know what I'm saying? But it made me want to be a student. It made me hungry. And today I consider myself first more than anything a student of life. Yep. You know, I know that's my responsibility, right? And no matter what else I do, uh, it's about coming in and, and being a white belt, you know what I mean? And, and being able to soak up game. Like, like here, like what y'all been uh, laying down this morning. Like, how much valuable education was that? Like, for real, for real. Jews, like, Master Musa, Jews. You know? Um, for real, man. I, you know, it, it reminds me, um, there was this thing in, in, I think it was Canada. Um, and I'm always studying and, and when I'm doing talks and, and building. But there was this thing in Canada that they did, this police, ironically. If y'all know our music, y'all know we not co-signing police ever. Um, but it was it's actually a police in, in Toronto who, uh, who um, came up with this notion uh, in, a, in, a, in a place where 80, it was 81% recidivism, right, in, in this community, right? So he came up with this notion that of something called positive tickets. I don't know if y'all ever heard of, of, of this guy, uh, Ward, Ward Chapman, I think is his name. But long story short, what he said he was going to do is he was going to start going through the communities and instead of locking people up and intimidating people and, and whatnot, he was going to start recognizing positive things that the youth was doing. And he was going to pull you to the side and give you a ticket. And the ticket says, that's awesome. Right? Go get you some free pizza <laughs> with this ticket. You know what I mean? Or go, you get to go to a movie of your choice. Right? So long story short, this became something that for 10 years was an experiment. And in that time, the recidivism rate went down to 8%. Oh. Right? So that, just that positive reinforcement, that even in the police state that we live in, you know, it's not that ain't gonna change the system, so don't get it twisted. But that's a that's a that is a I think that's a step in a positive direction. You know what I mean? And we need that. You know, um, another story, uh, real quick about uh, this is interesting. There was this guy who his he he went to school for marketing, right? And all of his homies was bankers, and uh, you know, going to school for that finance money, right? And so they would make fun of him saying like he was gonna be designing party flyers, you know, for a living. You know, and uh he you know, so he was in he was in New York City, he was walking around one day, and uh he started looking at all the trash laying around and he had an idea. And so he he put together this uh he started picking up the trash and he went home and he made this label and, and uh a design for a see-through like box, you know? And he put the trash inside the box and he made a label that said, authentic New York City trash, <laughs> right? So this guy, he starts to sell this to tourists, right? And he became a millionaire doing that, right? So that's another story that I think uh, speaks to seeing the value where other people don't see the value, you know? And 
you know, recognizing that that one person's trash is somebody else's compost. You know what I mean? And I think that's what, you know, hip hop is, 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 is the compost of our youth. You know, it's what they, the society calls the trash. It don't, it's not worth nothing, you know what I mean? But we know that's what we grow and thrive in. You know what I mean? And I think you guys are, are here because you recognize that. You know what I mean? The value of that. And that's key. The way we talk, the, the rhythms, everything that Brothers has been sharing, those rhythms are, you know, our, our slang. You know, it's the, it's the counter way we do stuff. You know, and if you look at that slang, you know, slang is... Uh, Looked at, looked down upon in, 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 in schools and all the proper English and all this shit. But slang is what keeps language fresh. You know, slang is what keeps it interesting. And, and, and it really is a, a way we build community outside of formal settings. You know, if you can speak the language, you know what I mean? There's a certain kind of connection, right? And, and knowing when brothers are saying those, those are bars, you know, what that means. Whether it's Shakespeare's bars or Nas, you know what I mean? Um, so, to, so speaking that language. So what I wanted to give you guys as a student, you know, um, was uh, really a reflection of what has already been shared, but it's an acronym called LIFE. And it's L-I-F-E um, in terms of, of, of hip hop uh, as it relates to education is, you know, the L is listening. You know what I mean? That's the first thing. Like we do in hip hop, we participate by listening. You know, see what's already popping, what's going on, and being open without no judgments, just listening, you know, um, and being observant. You know, oh, them the, them the J's, them, them the 21's, them the 13's, what, you know, paying attention. What are they, the students saying? What are they into? Um, the, the I, would be immersion. So how do we how do we be participate in the culture and not just look at it academically? You know what I mean? <laughs> Shit, write you around. You know, make a beat. You know, study and, and draw graph. You know, but participate so you have some appreciation, basically, essentially. Of, of the skill it takes, and, and, and you can respect that. Um, the F I want to give you uh, is feeling. And it's funny, uh, when I was preparing to come and, and build with y'all a little bit, I, I watched the brother Chris Edmonds uh, talk on Teaching Teachers of Magic. And I had no idea he was going to be here, so I'm, I'm blessed to even be able to connect like that. But he was just talking about the feeling. And, and being able to communicate, you know, energy. Uh, but I want to say that what, what I mean by feeling is that by your your listening, by your immersion, you get a, a you learn what it, the feeling, or you get a sensitivity uh, to what's real, what's authentic. You get a you get that feeling, you know. You get so so that you can make your own. Uh, interpretations, you can have your own taste, and you're not just following and trying to appease people, but you you actually have that, a sense of the feeling of hip hop for yourself, you know, and I, and I think that translates to the E, which is what we want, is engagement, you know what I mean? We, we want to have that authentic relationship to the culture so that we can uh, engage each other, you know, in a way that's respectful and people can feel that. So, you know, that's, that's a, a little two cents on how I think hip hop and education, you know, can come together and relate. And I, like I said, I'm just a student. I was robbed by this social system. And so <laughs> my education is, is ongoing and, and, you know, I'm putting it together. I'm a big proponent in, in self-education, you know what I mean, as opposed to the, the institutions doing it. Mm -hmm. And uh, so it's an everyday process. I'm always learning. But I, I at least wanted to have something to share since I know you guys are uh, the experts in that, at the front lines, you know, in what you do. So I'll, I'll end it right there and let my partner jump in. Hello.
Okay, well, first of all, um, I'd like to uh, acknowledge my partner, Stick, and uh, say how important it is in my work process. <clears throat> uh, my name is Matulu Obubala, uh, and uh, I'd like to greet you with Uhuru. Uh, it's a Swahili word that means freedom, and I put it forward in priority uh, because I'd like it to be on the minds of, uh, of, of you and, and also to precede the words that I plan to say to you. Um, because as Brother Tim Wise uh, said on the stage, you have to either identify yourself either on the side of the oppressor or the oppressed. So if you're thinking about freedom, then you have to understand that there are people who need freedom. And then, so whether you identify as the oppressor then determines what I gotta do because I'm trying to get free. So, with that being said, this has been my partner, uh, We've been rocking for like 20 something years. I know we look like we're only 20 years old. <laughs> but we, we've been rocking for like over 20 something years. And I feel the same way about this microphone that you feel, uh, brother, brother Empton. Um, I want to free up from this. Even though I'm on the stage all the time, I want to free up from it. I met this brother in an amazing place. I know he spoke of uh, being in high school and being kicked out of high school. Well. When I met him, I'm about one and a half years maybe older than he is. And when I moved to Tallahassee, Florida from New York City, uh, I met him right, right at that time when he was growing uh, beyond being persecuted for saying a rhyme about Malcolm X. Uh, and, uh, and believe it or not, I entered Florida a and University along with a brother named Ra Ra Rashid. You know him as Common Sense today, but we were in the same kind of thing at the same school at the same time, believe it or not. And uh, we were at a pep rally, and I saw this man uh, perform this song called Black As I Can Get, or it might have been a song called Fool Teacher. Either way, I just remembered. And so these are the songs that he would write when I met him, okay? And when I saw him, when he got Shiki on, I bought him and, and a staff, uh, and I knew he could be no, no older than 15 years old. I was like, wow, I, this is my brother, and I have to meet him. And so I have to say that since that day, We've been traveling through life together through the lens of hip hop music. Oh, I'm breaking tables down. Okay. <laughs> Bear with me. And I'm trying to keep it short. And I know it's right before lunch. And, we, and, and to follow these amazing uh, 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 artists, scientists, um, speakers, um, cultural catalysts, revolutionaries is, is an amazing thing. Yeah. So, <laughs> boom. Uh, by the way, I'm, I'm, I'm fresh off a of plane, 20 hours. I just came in from, from Europe, and I don't even know where I am right now. I, I, uh, <laughs> but I know I, I got off three planes, and, and now I'm here, and this has given me life. You all have given me life today, and I have hope, because I don't know, I don't know about places like this. I'm going to fast forward a little bit just because. Around 1999 or 2000, there was a brother who... Uh, in New York City, because we, we were living in Brooklyn when, when we made our album, Let's Get Free, our first album. And there was, a brother, there was a brother who met us who had done some work around the Limerick Nelson case, which was one that was around race in New York. Eastern Parkway, a Jewish uh, guy had ran in, into a, a black guy, and, and there was a lot happening around race in New York City. And this guy, who was a proponent of Limerick Nelson's justice, because they took care of, of the Jewish... Uh, family and, and they left Limerick out there to die. And so, uh, injustice for a long time. So, with that being said, we were invited by one of these guys who was speaking up about it and said, you guys are saying stuff that needs to be heard. And invited us, very quickly, invited us to New York Transit Tech. New York Transit Tech was a high school full of young people. And our album wasn't quite out yet, but we put out a mixtape and we had some stuff on the market. And uh, he heard, heard this song called They Schools that had been referenced. Mm -hmm. and, you know, I was hearing the stuff that Tim Wise was saying, and let me tell you, around that time, you'd have been kicked up out of that school the same way we were, because let me tell you, we went on the stage and were identifying and connecting with the students. It was a similar situation to this. And uh, so, as we performed the lyrics of the song, They Schools, the same thing happened as, to their press as happened to Stick. The principal of the school said, no, 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 we won't be having any of this. And so, um, you know, there's a lot I can talk about pedagogy uh, and, 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 uh, and what that means, but I want to just say a couple of lyrics. Uh, do you want to say yours? Do you mind? You want me to, can I say yours? You, you I'm going to say a little bit of sticks rap and I'm going to say something. Okay? 
Yeah. Day school. Day, yeah. You remember that? Yeah. 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 So, I'll let Cliff go first. I just want to say we crafted this as a demo in Tallahassee, Florida, way before we got to New York City, and it lasted onto our album, which didn't come out six years later. Uh, this, this was from the process of us writing the school, go, and, and the hook of the song goes, they schools can't teach us shit. My people need freedom. We trying to get all we can get. All my high school teachers can suck my dick, telling me white man lies, straight bullshit. Okay, don't judge me. Don't judge me. <laughs> listen, 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 listen. I went to school with some redneck crackers. Right around time, for third base dropped the cactus album. But I was reading Malcolm. I changed my name in 89, cleaning parts of my brain like a baby nine. I took the history class serious. Front row, every day of the week, third period, fucking with the teacher's head, calling them racist. I tried to show them crackers some light, they couldn't face it. I got my diploma from a school called Rickers full of teenage mothers and drug dealer niggas in the hallways. The popo was always present, searching through niggas' possessions, looking for dope and weapons, get your lessons. That's what my mom kept stressing. I tried to pay attention, but their classes weren't interested. They seemed to only glorify the Europeans. Talk my Africans was only three fifths of human beings. They schools can't teach us shit. My people need freedom. We trying to get all we can get. All my high school teachers can suck my check this out. I said, I said, school is like a 12 step brainwash camp. They make you think if you drop out, you ain't got a chance to advance in life. They try to make you pull your pants up. Students fight the teachers and get took away in handcuffs. And if that wasn't enough, then they expel you. All your peoples understand it, but to them, you were failure. Observation and participation. My favorite teachers, when they beat us in the head with the books and don't reach us. Whether you break bands or rock sway to do this, or be in the bathroom with your clique smoking that reefer, do you know their math class ain't important unless you add enough cash and multiples? Unemployment ain't rewarding? The mayor's world teaches extortion. You either get paid or locked up. The principal is like a warden in a four year sentence. Mad niggas never finish, but that doesn't mean I couldn't be a doctor or a dentist. So boom, those are the lyrics to this group. I gotta say, wait, 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 wait before you clap. Because we, uh, we, uh, we wrote these, this, these lyrics in our teens. I, I have to now, in hindsight, say, as progressive as that song is and was for me, standing where I stand now, I would have written different lyrics. I would have written different lyrics. Me too. Right. We, we, I, I think we both agree that we understand the process of education in a whole new way. And even though it needed to be expressed from a 17, 18, 19, 20 year old mind, here I stand 44. I know they schools can't teach us shit, but let's take over the school system. Yeah. And those were the lyrics I forgot to put in the song. <laughs> That's what I forgot to put in the song. So, That's right. That's right. Now, I was just going to say, because no, nobody knows it all. As soon as we think we do, that's when we fall. We got to do more to survive. We must evolve. Things change. That's when you think you've seen it all. We trip, we stumble, but we get back in stride. Each day, all the way, one step at a time. Don't want to let my ego and pride make me blind. The elders say, when you stop growing, that's when you die. The one who gets the knowledge is the one who asks why. Through the course of life, we gon' taste some humble pie, but I love it. It helps me appreciate the things that I take for granted. Gaining insight and understanding. Each one, teach one, we got to pass it on. Keep doing the knowledge, building and adding on. With faith in the assumption that nobody know everything, but everybody knows something. Word up. Um, well, well, that's the Thank you. Well, I'm gonna get off this stage for a I want to thank Kalanjan for opening up this thing. What, what this, this, uh, this, this uh, talk was entitled was the 10th element of hip hop, and we didn't even get to it. I think our time has run out. But I do want to say that, um, you know, like uh, the 10th element of hip hop should have long been part of what we understand hip hop being. But I, as we learn, we grow, and we change. And so with that being said, I just want to say I'm proud of my brother Stick. I'm going to give him these last moments to talk about the 10th element of hip-hop, because I know it's time for lunch. Um, we got two minutes. OK, before he gets into it, I want to say, I just released an album called Between Me and the World. It's a reinterpretation of Tommy Hesey Coates' book, Between the World and Me. I want you to check it out. I want you to check it out, because 
I, 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 don't quite, I didn't quite agree with the perspective. I, I, I know that's hard. Y'all like, wow, it's a, it's a literary uh, icon classic. Okay, cool. I think we all have to uh, be able to uh, contribute um, in our way. So with that being said, um, I'd like to say that we are growing and we're learning and we're changing. And I'd like for Stick right now to present before we leave. And thank you, the 10th element here. Right on. Real, real quick, because we were supposed to... We were supposed to get into that. So I just want to announce to y'all that Tenth Element of Hip Hop is a real thing. Um, if you don't know, there's nine elements of hip hop that have been uh, officially uh, uh, respected, ratified by the hip hop founders, right? And this year, April 21st, I partnered with an organization called Hip Hop is Green, and we introduced the Tenth Element for Hip Hop and officially made that a part of the culture. Uh, in uh, the Schaumburg in New York City, we, we had an event to inaugurate that. And the 10th element of hip hop is health and wellness. Um, so, so we've been, we've been doing work for years from, you know, from be healthy or let's get free. And uh, me personally, just growing in, in a lot of ways uh, on the health side of things. Uh, got into uh, sobriety, no no weed, no alcohol. Um, became a long distance running coach, a martial artist, and so many things in that space, in the holistic health space, and sustainability space that I, I know are, are powerful uh, for our communities. And so I created something called Fit Hop, which is a combination of the two. Did an album called A Workout, uh, debuted number one on the app, Apple uh, iTunes fitness charts, and it's authentic hip hop, but it's holistic health at the same time. And, and it ain't never been done it, it, without being corny. You know what I mean? So, so, so that's important. You know, as the brothers were saying, corny is not gonna engage. Um, so uh, the hip hop is green movement, the 10th element movement is just getting started. It was just born April 21st. But what we've been able to do in the spirit of the Black Panther Party is uh, we created something called Hip Hop Green Dinners, where we go in uh, the hood where people who have maybe never even had a plant-based meal, right? And uh, we, we're introducing the, the nourishment of that, but we uh, extending that the metaphor of the nourishment of hip hop from a certain perspective. Um, hip hop meaning hip, aware, right? To, to, to stay current, to, to know to want to know, to get hip, to stay hip. And then hop is, is these small leaps, right? These small leaps, this movement, right? Up and over things. So when we talk about hip hop, we talk about an awareness movement, you know, not just on the radio. And uh, so that's some of the work that we're doing with the 10th element. Uh, and we are integrating health and wellness uh, with hip hop in a real way on the ground. So, follow. Thank you.